Hey, this is James. I'm back with another video. Uh, this time I'm going to sh be showing a little bit more on railing, but talking about railing ends. So I'm just going to draw a short railing, about five meters. And let's have a look at that in 3D. Okay, so here we are. So by default, it uh, has an extension on the ends, past the end posts. So let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to open up the settings dialog. And uh, for now, I'm just going to remove one of these uh, rails. So I'm just going to go to the segment and select this handrail and just going to delete it. So therefore, I've just got a top rail. Uh, while I'm here, I'm also going to modify the uh, texture. So because the stainless steel has this kind of uh, brushed kind of look to it, I'm going to just change this to just steel uh, for now, and I'll just leave it at that. So I'm going to move to the ends, and I have to make sure that the setting at the top here is for the right component. So I want to do a return on the top rail. Uh, we have the uh, two handrails that we can add, or rails, but I want the top rail to be returned. Uh, by default, it will always revert back to top rail, so always check this. And I can see here that the ending is being extended 200 uh, mil uh, to the end. So if I set this to zero, and I'm going to hit OK, then I can see both ends. And if I have a kind of a zoom in, I can see that it stopped at the line of the end post. So I may need to extend that by about 20 mil because uh, I think this post is going to be about 40 mil uh, in diameter. So I need to extend it to the other side. So that may be one thing I need to do. So let's have a look at a couple more options. So uh, I could do a return. And here I want the extension to be say 200 out and then the radius. So let's say it's 100 uh, of the radius and it extends down another 100 and then returns back in. So if I just leave it at 50 and hit OK, then we can see that it only returns 50. So after the uh, curve, it then returns 50. So I'd want to return this um, the same, for example, at the top, if I to 200 so it then returns back into the middle of the uh, of the post so I can see that uh, changes on both sides because I've changed it on the settings for the whole rail okay so let's have then a look at another option so if I wanted to extend that down further then I could increase this hundred but I'm going to switch to just the single return and in this option, we can determine which direction it will go. So I want it to go downwards. Uh, we can choose that this return leg is at an angle, uh, but I want it at 90 degrees, actually the same. So for example, if this was at 120, then it will actually turn inwards back into the post. So let's just check the 120, see what happens. So here I can see it's starting to angle back. Okay, so open up the settings again. So I just want this vertical. The next one is saying how far do I want to extend it down, but I want to extend it all the way to the end, uh, to the base. And let's have a look at that. Okay. So what I want to do is actually something different here. So I can see the other end uh, is the same, yep. So I'm going to go into edit mode. And I actually want this return. I want it returning in this corner here. So I don't want it extending past the post. I want this return to be the post. So I could do this in actually two ways here. Either I can extend this post down and have the return just go to the top of, it, uh, top of this uh, post. But I think it's easier if I just have this continuous. So what I'm gonna do is select the end post here. And we're gonna choose none. So I'll st still st see a uh, line just to indicate that's where the node is, but there's no post uh, there. Then I'm going to select the end. 
and I'm just going to open up the settings of this sub element. And instead of um, it being extended 200, if I just hit zero and click OK, then I can see that it's still being uh, extended. So it's zero and then it curves. So I have to factor in the curve uh, of here. So, and I have to factor in the width of this uh, uh, pipe, basically. So if I say just minus 100, then you'll see what I mean. So you can see that the post, yeah, it goes to the end. So I want this to be in the middle. So instead of returning minus 100, if I go minus 80, because it's the 40 mil is the diameter of this uh, tube, so if I go OK, then this is going to be in the middle. OK, so that's quite good. But let's try with a um, a bigger diamond, a bigger radius uh, here. So if I increase this radius to say 300, then I will need to inset this by 280. And let's click OK. OK, so that's looking better. So maybe this is like a safety barrier, but I can see my um, my balusters are being extended up to the top. So how can we solve this? So um, what I can do is select the balusters here and then right click and say connect and use solid element operations. So we can actually do this within elements within the curtain wall. So I'm going to go to connect, solid element operations and it's going to be my target. Then I'm going to select this uh, pipe radius here and that's going to be the operator. And my operation is going to be a subtraction with upward extrusion. So anything of this baluster above there will be chopped off. So I'm going to hit uh, subtraction with upward extrusion and execute. And so now I have a nice clean um, system here where the balusters are not uh, extending up. So I'm just going to close the SEO and then exit. And you'll see that I don't see that line because that's only a guide to indicate there's a post there. So this is how we can get a curve on the end of a railing and have the balusters uh, set up as well. Yep. So this could be a, yeah, a barrier uh, to, to something. So I would need to do that on the other end as well. But uh, hopefully this gives you a, an idea on how to adjust these ends. Okay, thanks. Until the next video, see you.